So I've got a fun and quite quick tutorial today for you, um, which I think is a nice idea for Valentine's Day. So I had a think about what I could do and I ended up doing loads of like hearts and flowers and it all just seemed a bit twee and, and anyway, then I fell upon this. Um, so it's sort of, it's raised up from the surface and then the fish are raised up and the hearts are raised up. Um, but yeah, it's quite quick and it's quite easy to do. Uh, so yeah, if you fancy it, then have a look. So I'm starting out, I've got these ready-made greetings cards. Um, they're quite cheap, they come from the works, I think. Um, and obviously they've got envelopes with them. So I've taken a piece of watercolour paper and I've just cut it down to roughly the size of the card. And I'm going to make the deckled edges. So I'm going to take my ruler and leave myself a space. If you go too close to the edge, it's going to be quite difficult to tear it. Um, so I'm going to go about that, which is what, about a centimetre, I suppose. Um, I've got this tool, which is for scoring paper. If you haven't got one of those, you could get a kitchen knife um, and just use the back side of it like that. Um, but I know that this one works, so I'm just going to do that. And then keeping your ruler there, just fold up the edge slightly and then pressing down on the ruler, tear along that edge. And then you can use your tool just to flatten out any lines. And the same on the other side. So about a centimetre in. Here I'll have a go with a kitchen knife on this one. And then the same on these sides. And then get your card and just check that it sort of fits nicely or how you'd like on your card. So now I'm just going to very gently, not a hard line, pencil in a um, uh, line so that I've got a border. So I guess I'm coming about a centimetre in again. Maybe a bit more. How much is that? Oh, just over one and a half centimetres. But I'm just eyeballing it. So you can see I've just got a very faint border. So I've got some clean water and my paint palette and I'm just going to wet the area within the lines that I've drawn with just some clear water. Make sure it's good and wet. It doesn't matter really if you go over the lines, but um, I'm going to try and stay within them. And then I'm going to take quite a big brush. So this is a size four and I'm going to get some ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's Grey in mine as well, just to sort of darken it up a little bit. And then just brush it into the wet area. And you can splodge it around. So this is our sort of watery background. Pull the paint around on the wet surface. Make some areas darker and some areas lighter. Oh, I've gone over a bit there. If you go over, you can just flick it back up with your finger, tidy that line back up again. I'm going to splodge some bits on like that. 
And then I'm going to take my pot of sea salt from the kitchen and just crush some over the surface. And then leave that to dry. Leave it to dry completely before you try and brush the salt off. So while that's drying, I'm going to do my fish. Um, I think I want my fish to be about six-ish centimetres long each. So I'm just going to put some little marks on. Just put a mark there. And then I want to draw a kind of elongated lemon shape. And then two smaller versions of that shape on the end for its fins. So it's a really simple childlike fish shape. And I'm going to do another one going the other way. So those are my shapes. I'm just going to make them a little bit paler because I don't want the pencil lines really to show in the through in the watercolour. So using my putty rubber, just pressing on the top just to make those lines a little bit fainter. And then I'm going to take another paintbrush. This one is a size three and some clean water. And like we did with the background, I'm just going to wet the area within the lines of the fish. And then I'm going to take a bit of Payne's Grey. If you don't have Payne's Grey, you could use a bit of black, maybe put a little bit of blue in it. That will give you a similar colour. Um, or you could use a more of a trout and put a bit of brown in it. And then just soften that in. So I've just gone around the edges. I haven't completely filled the fish, just to make the fish look as though it's a bit more 3D. Like so. And I'm going to do the same with the other one. There we go. And then I'm going to let those dry. Now that they're completely dry, I'm going to go in with my fine liner. This is a Winsor & Newton 0.3 um, waterproof fine liner. If you don't have a waterproof one, you might want to do this step after the next step because I'm going to add more paint to it after I've done this. But um, So I'm just going to put in the eyes. So I'm just doing a circle and then a smaller circle, which I'm colouring in. It really simple. You can give them a little bit of a mouth if you want. Give them a bit of a smile, make them look happy. Um, and then I'm going to do a, an outline. I'm not going to do, be too tidy about it. Just a black outline around them. like that. And now I'm going to go in with a smaller brush, so now I've got a zero um, and I'm going to take a bit more 
Payne's Grey and give them a bit of decoration. So let's go for zigzags on this one. And then just with a wet brush, I'm just going to soften the, the edges where the zigzag joins the fish like that. And I'm going to do its fin, so just some lines down like that. And then the second one I'm going to make spotty, so I'm just going to put my brush down and wiggle to give it some sort of uneven spots. And again, I'm just going to, with a clean wet brush, soften it around the edge and then do the same on this one's tail. And then we can let those dry and we can cut them out. So I've got a pair of little scissors and Cut them out roughly to begin with. And then I'm going to go around the edge and I'm going to leave a little bit of the paper. I'm not cutting right up to the line. Um, just leaving a little bit so they do look like they're sort of paper cutouts and made with love. Two little fishies. So you can see we've got quite a nice sort of watery, uneven um, texture there. And then you can sort of place your fish and think about what they're going to look like. Um, but I'm going to do some more to this before I put the fish on. So I'm going to rub out any pencil lines that are still showing from where I drew on my border. And I'm going to paint a border around here. So bring my palette back. Put my fish to one side for the moment. So I'm going to stick with the same colours I had, but just use um, a thicker, darker mix. So I've got my ultramarine and some more Payne's Grey. And I'm going to start by doing a line around the edge so you can do it freehand if you want it doesn't matter if it's wobbly that's sort of part of the charm of it um, or you could do my trick which is to put a ruler down inside of where you want to draw the line and then using this finger you rest that on the edge of the ruler so that's your guide and you place your brush and then sort of lock your hand and follow the ruler down like that. It does take a little bit of practice doing lines like that, um, but it's quite fun, it's quite satisfying. So this finger here runs along your ruler and your brush rests on top of it. And just go slowly and run your finger down the ruler. And 
and then I'm going to give it a little bit of decoration. Make sure I've got plenty of paint there. And I'm just going to give it a bit, make sure this is dry before you put your hand on it. Just give it a bit of a scalloped edge. So I'm going to start in the corner and then just draw some shapes on like that. And I'm going to go all the way around. And then I'm just going to put a little dot inside each one. So I'm planning on doing um, writing around the outside. Um, if you're not confident hand lettering, you could um, print something from your computer and trace it on or you could extend your border and carry on doing different decorative things around the side um, and then just write your message inside but um, I'm going to go ahead and pencil gently pencil in um, the quote that I want so um, I've sort of roughly thought out how I want the wording to go. It's always a good idea just to have a vague thought about it before, think about it before. So um, my quote is, of all the fish in the sea, I choose you and you chose me. So I'm going to put of all the fish on this side. And then this edge is shorter, so it's going to have to be a shorter bit there. So in the C. I chose you. And you. Chose me. So with that rough plan, I can look and see that kind of the middle of this line is, is around about here. So I'm actually going to start vaguely in the middle with the the. Oh, writing fush rather than fish. And I'm just very gently penciling it in. And then I'm going to go backwards and go all and of. just so that it's kind of spaced nicely. And then in the C, that is the middle word, so let's do that one first. And then middle of this is probably the U. chose I chose you and you chose me and then I'm going to take my fine liner and go back over and pretty it up a bit Now what I like to do is, on the downward strokes, thicken up the line. So anywhere, so there I would have gone up and then I'm coming down. So that little bit there is going to be thicker and the same there. Just gives it a bit more interest.
and then make sure that the pen is completely dry before you rub out your pencil marks underneath. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to do some little hearts. So back on my zero brush and I'm going to take a bit of red and I quite like to add just a tiny bit of brown to my um, reds and add a little bit of burnt umber which is quite a warm brown a bit more I'm just going to paint some watercolour hearts in varying sizes. You can clean off your brush and just finish it up with a wet brush and it'll give you that nice watercolour texture. Dip a bit more watercolour on there if you want to really accentuate the watercolour texture. And leave those to dry for a minute. When we come back to our um, background, we'll rub out the pencil lines behind the writing. see how our fish are going to look on that. I think it's going to look quite sweet. So I'm going to take my fine liner and go round my little hearts again in quite a rough way, not being very precious about it. And get my scissors and cut them out. Again I'm leaving a little bit of paper around the edge. And now we need to think about where we want to position them. So I've kind of done mine like this. But you can mess around, you can have them at an angle. Um, or you could have some little bits of seaweed. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but that's how I want mine. And then I've got some double-sided foam tape and I'm going to cut some bits off to stick behind the fish so a longer bit for its body and then a little short bit for its tail and stick that on the back Peel off the backing, which is always really fiddly with this tape. And then, once I know exactly where I want them, put them a little bit lower. Stick the first fish down. And the foam tape's nice because it just raises them up from the surface slightly. 
and the same for the other fish. And then the same for the hearts, just stick a tiny bit of your foam tape under the hearts so that they're raised up a little bit as well. And there we have them secure in place, but just raised up slightly from the surface and they cast a bit of a shadow, which I always think looks quite nice. Now I always like everything to look a little bit old, so um, I'm going to use this Distress ink. The one I've got is Vintage Photo, um, and then it comes with this, at least I think it comes with this, I didn't buy it separately, this little sponge thing. Um, and I'm just going to dirty up the edges slightly. So just going around and it, it really catches that deckled edge um, just to make it look a bit vintagey. This is completely optional of course because I mean I, I like everything to look quite old but not everybody does. My husband's always horrified when I paint something and then I distress it. I think it just gives it a little added charm. And then this is ready to stick onto your card. So like I said, I've already got these cards which have been creased down the middle and fold nicely. And I know that I've got an envelope that fits. So I think I might use a bit more of my um, double-sided foam tape and stick it down with this. So let me put some around the back. Take your card and make sure you got it the right way up and it's gonna open the right way. Um, and stick it down. So there we have it. One Valentine's card already for the 14th of February. If this doesn't float your boat for Valentine's Day, I do have another video where I teach you how to make these <coughs> um, Victorian um, puzzle purses which are folded pieces of paper and decorated and then there's space inside to put a message. They're also another nice idea for Valentine's Day. So I hope you enjoyed it and you've produced something that you like. Um, I'd love it if you shared any of your makes with me. Um, best place to do that is probably on Instagram, uh, theodora.gould. If you leave a comment below I will try and get back to you and of course if you're interested in more tutorials then hit the subscribe button. So thanks for watching and have fun making!